You can certainly use plain CSS or SAS to write styles, but the advantage of styled components is that it meshes well with React and provides a way for us to control styles with our React code if we need to. It also conveniently provides a few key features out of the box for free, such as automatic critical CSS and automatic vendor prefixing. So what does CSS and JS mean? It's pretty self-explanatory. You can write CSS in your JavaScript files. With styled components, we can do something like this. It lets us create React components with styles automatically scoped to each component. The styles for these components are written using tagged template literals in these backticks, and there's no special syntax required. Simply write plain CSS or SCSS, just like you would in a CSS or SAS file. In this example, the styled button component renders a button HTML element declared with styled.button, and it has a blue background and white text. We can add the styled button component directly in our JSX using the styled button variable we created up here. Since styled components are just React components with styles attached to them, we can pass them props and adapt our styles based on the value of those props. So as you can see, since this is technically all JavaScript, we could take advantage of the template literal and access the isActive prop on the styled button styled component and change the background color to red when that prop is truthy. There are a ton of different things you can do with styled components, and I'd encourage you to poke around the documentation to see the different possibilities before moving on. Before we dive into installing and using styled components in our app, there are a few things you should keep in mind. First, styled components is not an all or nothing styling library. You can use it a little or use it a lot. So for example, you could wrap your whole app in one giant styled component and write all of your styles in that one component, but that would kind of defeat the purpose. You could also be on the opposite end of the spectrum and have every single element in your templates as a styled component, but that would also become hard to manage very quickly. I found that there can be a happy medium. Creating styled components for styles that are frequently repeated and targeting classes within them. We'll use our best judgment on whether or not to keep those styled component declarations within a React components file or split it out into a separate file. At the end of the day, it's up to us developers to make the right judgment call on how to organize our styles in a way that is both maintainable and easy for others to understand. Second, I found that styled components can get quite confusing for those who aren't familiar with them. Writing JSX in React is already funky as is, and adding styled components on top of that can make a code base hard to read very quickly. So for example, I have a styled component here that's called button, but I also have a modal that is a component imported from another file, and it's hard to distinguish which one is a style component and which one is just a regular React component. So to easily distinguish between React components and style components, we'll be prefixing all of our style component names with styled. So for example, instead of naming the style component button, I'll be naming it styled button instead. So let's get style components installed and configured in our app. So if we CD into our React app, the client directory, we'll install the npm module. npm install dash dash save style dash components. Then we'll also install the style components Babel plugin, which gives us some nice development benefits like more legible class names, server side rendering compatibility, smaller bundles and more. Next, to activate the Babel plugin, we will copy this small JSON snippet, and then we'll create a Babel config .babelrc at the root of our client directory and paste it in. Then we'll also install the Babel macro to make sure the Babel plugin works with our create React app setup.
After all that, we'll CD back to the root of our project and run npm start. And before we start creating style components, um, if you are using VS Code, make sure to install this VS Code style components extension, which will give you a uh, syntax highlighting for your style components. All right, now let's try creating our first style component. At the top of our app.js file, we'll remove the import for our app.css file and import style components instead. And remember that we are importing from styled components slash macro, not just styled components, to take advantage of the Babel plugin. After that, we'll create a simple styled login button style component for our login button. Notice that we're using a styled.a, so our button will technically be an anchor link, not a button element. And down in our return statement, we can replace this anchor link with our styled login button style component. If we log out here, we should be able to see that our style component is working and it has a background color of a green, it has white text and a border radius of 30 pixels. And if you pop open the dev tools, you should also be able to see that the anchor link has a class assigned to it, and this class is prefixed with the React component it was declared in app, and it has the styled login button variable name that we've given it. At this point, you might be asking yourself, if styles are scoped to each component, then how do we apply styles globally? Do we have a style component for the body tag? The answer is no. Style components has something called create global style for this that generates a special style component that handles global styles. So let's give it a shot. We will import create global style from style component slash macro. And then we will add our global style right below it. And here you can see that I'm using a tag template literal to um, just add some global HTML to the body and the HTML. And once we have that, all we need to do is add our global style style component to our JSX. And we'll put it right underneath our app div. After giving it a save, we can head back to our localhost 3000 and we can see that our global styles have been applied. Our body's background color is black and uh, the text color is white. Now you may be wondering if SAS variables are possible in style components, since we can write styles with SCSS syntax. The short answer is no. SAS variables are not possible, but style components does have full theming support using a theme provider component. Feel free to read up on how theming works with theme provider, but we won't be using it in our app. I think the syntax is overly verbose and we won't be dealing with multiple themes. Instead, we'll be using CSS variables. In our global styles, we'll declare our CSS variables in the colon root selector and then simply refer to them in our style components with the var function. So if I go up to my global style and I add some CSS variables in the root selector, and since I have these black, green, white, and uh, font variables, I can use them in my style components now. So if I go to my style login button and replace this green variable with var green, and maybe this color with var white, and I go and check on localhost 3000, we can see that this anchor link is using var green. All right, so up to this point, we've been adding all of our style components to the top of our app.js file, but as you can imagine, that can get unwieldy pretty quickly. We can keep our React component files short and sweet by moving some of the style components, like the global styles, to their own directory. We'll create a styles directory under a client source and move our global styles to a global style.js file.
We'll also create a index.js file in the styles directory as the place we'll reference when pulling these style components into every file. And here we'll say export default as global style from the global style file. This is just a convenient way that I can import the style components um, with named imports instead of default imports. So in my React components, I can do something like this instead of something like this. Now to keep CSS variables isolated in their own file, we'll also create a variables.js file in our styles directory. We're using the CSS helper function here to create a snippet of CSS that we can import into any existing style component. You can notice that we can store values like font families in our CSS variables. Then we'll create a file to store the font face declarations, just like we did with global styles and variables. We'll call it fonts. And it'll look something like this. Finally, all we need to do is import this global style that we've created in our styles directory in our app.js file. So let's get rid of this create global style we made before. Get rid of that import. And then here we'll say import global style from styles. And remember that we are exporting our global style here under styles index.js, which is why we only have to give it the styles file path. At this point, you'll notice that our global styles are kicking in and um, our custom font is loading. If you want to keep learning about how to build real world apps with the latest technologies and other career related topics, then start right now by subscribing to our channel and liking this video.